Welcome back to the Hobby Show, the Amherst Railroad Hobby Show 2024. I'm standing in front of the Atlas booth in the Mallory building. I thought I'd get started a little bit early today before the crowds pick up and see if we can't have some conversations. I thought we would uh, go right back over to the uh, Atlas booth behind me and see if we can't have a conversation with them. Mr. Beethoven? Absolutely. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> do you want to tell people who you are? So, <laughs> so tell people what you just told me. <laughs> no. Yeah, come on, come on. You okay, do. okay. You might be watching. So. A- Andrew Fitch is a friend of mine, and he said for me to look you up and give you some harassment, which I'm going to do because I'm just that sort of nice guy. <laughs> and, who, and who are you? What My do you name's model? Larry Otis. I'm in G scale and Z scale. Remember the Central Connecticut G gauges and the Big Train Operators Club. It's fantastic. I we got to get Andrew to come to one of these uh, Amherst shows. I know he comes to the large scale, large scale train show that the Amherst Society does in April. Yeah. But I'm trying to get him down here for uh, for this one as well. Yeah. He also goes to the Big Train Operators Club show in June. You, where, where's that one at? That's going to be at Burdenhand Inn. And you have to be a member to go. Fantastic. Thanks for stopping by and giving me a hard time. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's good. Nice <laughs> meeting you. Nice to meet you. Have so, a great show. Again, I'm over at the Central Connecticut G Gauges booth. So. Oh, okay. Oh, in the, um, in the center building. of the Young Building. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Nice meeting you. Good to meet you. Appreciate it. So, who wants to rep Atlas for me? I like how I, I like how the guys on the sides all start spreading out. Are we live? We're live hey, on everyone. YouTube, Matt. We're just getting started this morning. Okay, um, first but one. A lot of people yesterday said, you know, go talk to those Atlas guys, see what they are up to, uh, what's new and upcoming for them. What's new? Well, I've got the new O Scale Premier arrivals in front of us. These are uh, Aces are already in. Givos are coming in next month. Same with the E8s uh, and scale for you New England guys. We got Dash 840Bs with ditch lights, uh-huh. all for the first time. Okay. Yeah, very nice in N scale. And it's a four axle. <laughs> and it's a four axle with ditch lights. Yeah. Also I, I, for the New I England. Might, I might have a lot of Atlas four axle uh, switchers and stuff. That's that's my yeah. bread and butter. Yeah. Or you England New England model router. Um, or, like Guilford New York, New York City. Okay, kind of, so... The New York Central sold off a bunch of their stuff to my freelance railroad, and I'm trying to keep some of gotcha. the New York Central freight operations going. Yeah. So, yeah. Very nice. Very cool. And as well as... Uh, these are very cool. You can use them anywhere. I Handy. just put in a big order for those to fill my uh, yard with some yard so, offices. Yeah, yeah. give some realism to your yard. Just plop it. And for HO your, uh, scale only? Nope. Got the N scale. Little brother right I here. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. The N no. scale looks great. I was looking at those yesterday. Yeah, they're really they're nearly identical. Just, just yeah. Very cool. As well as a bunch of hoppers coming in. Oh, uh, more N scale stuff. This is the N scale side of the booth. We got this is the good side of the booth. <laughs> HO scale. <laughs> but my joke is I'm going to start handing out stickers that say, does that come in N scale? And just walk around and every time there I you see go. somebody, I'm just going to say, is that coming in N scale? So we got uh, GP40s also with ditch lights. Is that the... This is Port Harbor. They're out in St. Louis. I love the honoring responders stuff. I've been yeah. uh, trying to get all so the stuff that comes out. A little 911 uh, graphic there. Um, EMS. Is Police. this out now or when is this This is in? out now. So we took these in last month and shipped them to dealers already. Fantastic. They should be around at the show. So they're available for purchase now. With and without decoders, I'm guessing? Uh, yes, silver, silver and silver gold. gold. So yep. DCC ready and sound equipped. Yep. And then uh, we'll shoot down. Let's talk about the new two track. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. It's okay. So a lot of people loved our true track, but it was in a tan ballast before. 
which is really just specific to the Midwest and Southeast. So we listened and we changed it to gray. There you go. So now for uh, everybody else around the country can actually <laughs> use it now, but it's got North American tie spacing, so the ties are closer together than our competitors. So what you're saying is a uh, Northeast New Jersey based company was making things for the Midwest and left yeah. out <laughs> the gray, their hometown yeah. favorites, yeah. So now the hometown favorite, we can, yep, but it's actually based on Lehigh Valley tie spacing. Oh, good. Yeah, nice. from a schematic. Nice. <laughs> End scale uh, cupola cabooses. This is a Black River and Western one. Oh. This one's really cool, though. General Electric. This oh, would nice. go behind, like, a Chernobyl car with, like, or, or like, um, anything with, like, a generator on it. Yeah, oh, okay. It would be the Escort caboose for, like, a big depressed flat car. Uh, HO stuff. Our train man, uh, Thrall 4750 Hoppers. We got David Joseph Lease Leasing Company there. If you follow me, I'll take uh, take you down to the, the HO side of the booth. You want to check out some F7s? You want to show some Whoa. F7s? So here we got F7s. I think somebody's excited about yeah. this. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm here. We have F7 A and B sets. We have our Gunnarsson Multimax. People are very excited about these. We have our Hopper cars, which these is a special run, correct? That's the Golden Spike Club. Golden Spike Club. Might have to hold so that guy, that's yeah. for our mailing list. You know, yeah. I think. Yeah. I, yeah. What is it, 139 for deluxe membership? Yeah, I believe so. But deluxe membership comes with this hot bike. Like, yep. As an end here. scaler, that thing's huge. Oh, yes. yes. Massive. That is huge. Yeah, these, these, these those scale yeah. guys, they love big trains. I, I don't <laughs> get it. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't center, get it? Someone car. tells yeah. me you are no scale guys. I used to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. Depressed center flat car, transformer load. Awesome. We have our multi cars. Yep. With containers, big container guys big over container. here. Love it. So we'll take it over to our HO side. And the HO side. Cheap 38s, high hood, low hood. We have our MP36s, much awaited. We have our U30Cs. We have our train masters. We have Matt's special box car over here. We have our 3230. More U30Cs. Poor tech hopper cars. And finally, we have our Metro Twilight. Ross, I, I gotta ask Ross, what do you model? You're just way excited I'm, about I'm a, this. I'm a crusty short line guy, okay? Like, I, <laughs> yeah, this he's is a freelancer, much This like is my bread and butter here. Like, this is it. I love it. I yeah. love it. Good stuff. Yeah, and then we have our signals over here. These like, have become very popular. They are. Too, yeah, like, they people are. that want to add a signal or two yeah. are really jumping in on these. Jumping. Yeah. There are custom signals here. There are new acquisition. We have our layout side signals. That's the crack. It's track side lighting. Yes. yes, trademark, yes. trademark. N scale, O scale, HO scale. We have our boards. And Scott was nice enough to make a little diorama here. Saw that. With our yeah. building side lighting. And that's our display. We thought it was a little bit of stuff. It turned out to be a lot of stuff. So I mean, it's all right. Well, it's, it's good to see, as somebody that grew up in New Jersey, as yeah. someone who owned more Atlas Code 100 track than yeah. I would like to admit when I was a kid. Uh, it's good to see you guys still uh, growing and expanding right? and uh, yeah. you know making new stuff. So this, uh, how new is this? I, it's I mean, we just recently announced this, like maybe like a week ago. So tell us about this. Scott's actually the man behind the plan here. Come here, Scott. What do you got going there, Ross? So we just want a little so, background on the this is new, ac so. new acquisition. New acquisition, yes. Um, Many of you in the low scale world may remember Terry Christophers, uh, who had run a, pro, a company called Custom Signals for many, many years. He has recently retired from the business, and we have acquired the assets to the Custom Signals uh, product line, and we'll be incorporating it within the Atlas All Scale sy Signal system uh, over time. Uh, we wanted to show some of the things that are still uh, available that, that uh, we received last week, um, and it will be getting put into our, our system for, for acquisition by customers, as well as having customers be able to know that we are supporting the product and we are going to be developing things with parts of these products going forward. Um, so it's a really nice thing to go along with the Atlas All Scale Signal System as they were developed roughly about the same time with some of the same people. Uh, so they do work together very nicely. Um, some of the things will still need some testing and things, but it all does go and work together and it becomes part of one big happy family. Crossbar. Come on. Then there are crossing signals. Yes, oh, indeed. We've wanted these for a long time. 
We have ah, wanted crossing stones for a long time. It's finally, so nice to actually have them finally. Uh, with, you know, with some things there. Yeah. And we'll be doing some other announcements over the year. How complicated is all this to set up? I think that's... Extremely simple. Yeah, I, I yeah. think that's one big difference that you guys are doing with the signaling is... Giving, Making it real, real right. giving Making the people real. that like scenery, not electronics, to get into yeah. this side of it. Yeah, you can go from everything from just basic animation of a single head into full uh, ABS block systems, including diverging routes with interlockings and everything else. You can make it as complex as you like, right. but it's also very, very simple to understand and to set up right away for the, for the new person, or even the experienced signal, uh, person who knows signals. It's a very nice way to get in without having to do a lot of real difficult changes to your layout or, or things. One of the things that always happens when people talk about signaling, you say, my layout's built, why would I want to add signaling? It's going to tear this up, it's going to tear this up. The answer is not really. All you need to do is find a place to put a mask, find a place to put the board underneath, and all the rest of the wiring is essentially self-contained. So you're not rewiring your whole layout, you're not having to put in massive quantities of, of other stuff. Uh, train detection can be done very simply or very complex, depending on what you, whether you use DC or DCC. And so all of it is very nice and modular, so you can work with this and really make it, you know, make it happen for your layout and the type of things you want to do. Yeah, you know, signals like the connotation. It's hard. It doesn't yeah. have to be hard. Yeah. We're here uh, it, to make it easy. Signals <laughs> and always end up being a little bit of an afterthought too. So right, being able right, to have right. something simple to get in there Correct. and just see how. I'm big into the electronics stuff. Every, everyone on my YouTube channel will tell you I make things extremely complicated. Uh -oh. But I also I also want to say I do appreciate that there are ways to get into this stuff and bring people into the world of signaling and lighting and stuff. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. Exactly. Not at all. In fact, I know Ross is showing you the, the little building over here. Bring that camera around. You might think this is hard to do. There's three lights here all over a set of doors. What am I running it with? A nine volt battery and a resistor. Yeah. It's a very, very basic wiring. Anybody can really make it how, happen. How long did that take you? Well, to make it really look nice and write all the stuff on it? <laughs> no. um, not very long at all. Um, <laughs> so it, I mean, you can add these things to your current uh, projects, to your current construction, to your current uh, layouts. Not difficult to operate at all. We include all those proper resistors so that if you've got two lights on a on a thing, the resistor value is appropriate for that. Oh, okay. If you have some of the more modern ones with the four light uh, heads, like this one for example, where you'd see these on most like uh, parking lots and mall areas and things to that effect, where you have four heads on the top of the mast. The proper resistor is in there for that as well. You don't have to worry about calculating that. That's right. All that math in order. All that's done for you. One of my followers just said, yeah, why use a couple of wires when you can use 36 wires? Oh, <laughs> come now. This guy, he gets it. No, that's me. They're giving me a hard time. They're, they're there saying I'm the one making it complicated. We also did have a question to go back to Ross a little bit. They're saying they want to know when those Metro uh, items are coming out. I have a question for Ross. Right here? Yeah. They're canceled. Thank you. I'm just kidding. Um, so these will actually be in, we'll say, February. Oh, you March. said I can take it and put it in my pocket and walk out of here? I mean, you could. Someone might stop you, but I don't know. I mean, I might. Who knows? But these, we're missing two road names here, but everything should be in, we'll say, probably Q2, the beginning of Q2. The engines will be here first, and then the cars, but they'll be there shortly after. We're super excited. If you look up, or if you look at the car here, if you looked at the original sample, it had a lighter tint to the windows. So when you look at these cars at night when they're running on the main line, it looks green. Right. It turned out ours were very green. So we wanted to get new windows in here. It looks a lot sharper. They're very, very good windows. And I think I think it's pretty, pretty good. So we should see these uh, pretty soon. And one thing if you can just address too, uh, you guys put out a newsletter. Mm -hmm. uh, people can sign up via email and you get production reports. You can basically get a list of this is, you know, when stuff's coming out. If people wanted to uh, get on that list, what's a good way to find that? You can go on our website, you can put your email in right at the bottom of the homepage. If you don't want to put your email in, you can always call us at any time. 
the production schedule is subject to change at any time. So while we can say, yes, this is coming in February, a freak storm can come in, the ship's delayed, and then you're waiting another month or two, right? So I we're saw very it transparent. Black and white on yeah. your website. Where your is it? not Where here. Is Where's it? my trains? But we, yeah. we get it. We're just as excited as everyone else for these products to finally get here. For the first time, I can say, like 90% of the products on this table are coming in the next two weeks, or at least in like quarter number two, which is awesome. Oh yeah, although yeah. I'm a little, my wallet's a little nervous because I, 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 yeah. I, I am looking at that list and stuff's coming in and the pre-orders. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what, I mean, I had two GP38s on order, slapping me around here. I'm gonna get some of these. These are awesome. Yeah. I might have to get a U30. So who doesn't like crusty GEs? <laughs> Whether that may be up, it's gonna look amazing. So uh, pre-orders and stuff can be done direct, or do you get a retailer? Yep, or? They can be directly through us or the dealer of your choice. Um, either works for us. As long as you get the train to the end of the day, we're happy. And as long as you're happy, we're happy. Ross, thanks so much. Uh, really, really uh, appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for, for stopping your time. by. Thank you so much. Glad we got to talk. Yeah, Thank you. enjoy the show. <laughs> there you had it. A little inside look at some of the stuff that Atlas is working on. Yeah, but, uh, find an email in the right direction now that we're... Excuse me. Hey, what's going on, buddy? Joe, why aren't you at the booth? Wait, I, I told, you know, I told, um, I told, uh, you know, told Ray, I'm like, listen, I need some time off, you know. <laughs> I know, you need some alone time. Yeah, alone time. Ray can, be, Ray can be a lot, I get it. Yeah, I can, definitely. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Yeah, you yeah, too. I'm going to make my way over into the, to the next building over and I'm, gonna, I'm looking behind me to see if, uh, if who would happen to go there. But I'm going to walk over to the next building. There's a gentleman that I talked to last year. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get in and talk to him. We had a really good conversation about signals. Uh, not quite the simple setup of Atlas, but an interesting alternative. Morning. John, I see you got the train finally out and parked. It is fully parked. We're doing the unloading of the animals. New this year is the wagons coming off the train. Oh. I just finished those little ramps a few days ago. I see you're using tow trucks and not uh, Caterpillar. Uh... We, we had to lease. Ah, I these, gotcha. these little trucks that I, I, I have on the train, they're like from Germany and they're hard to find. And right now they're not shipping to the U.S. I hope you want to let Joe through. Okay. Um, but it's here, so... It always looks great spread out like that. Oh yeah. Just like it would be. I see you have the trainers on the correct side of the... Uh, At least I think they're on the correct side. Oh, I, I think it is the left side. It's supposed to be the left side, but for today we had to kind of, just so people could see it. Yeah. Well, it's looking good, John. Hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see you maybe down at some uh, other layouts this year. I do plan to go back to Jersey at some point soon, so awesome. you'll awesome. see me there. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, Heath, did you visit with BLI yesterday? Any chance of asking them about their new subscription service? I did see that notice come out. I have not talked to them yet. So, yeah, I can uh, I can make a point to get over there and try and catch them. This does not look like rain. This looks Kind of disappointing. Yesterday they had some record numbers. We were hoping for a little bit of nicer weather today to keep those numbers up. But uh, you know, it is what it is. People are still coming out. I I do see some people at the ticket line, but the snow has arrived. Oh.
That's fun, that snowy stuff. Good thing I'm not carrying any electronics or anything through there. I didn't even come over and say anything. Why not? Thank you. Three, two, zero. We're just going to make our way. Stop announcing uh, cars parked in the wrong spot. So I'm going to see if we can talk to uh, these guys. And I, I unfortunately forget his first name because I'm terrible with that. Kevin. That's his first name. It's Kevin. Uh, but Kevin owns Signal Logic Systems. I'm just asking. He's a bunch of turnout. Switch machines and everything. But the idea will be is we'll have that one generic kind of handheld. I want to see what has changed over the last year uh, with his setup. And then we can talk to him. Just like you saw there, it's kind of adjusted to where that position is. So when some people are. So you're basically talking about like a master controller. Just for the service. That's your program. You'll be handheld. So, we'll, we'll try and come back to him in one second once he's done with that conversation. It's the hard part about the show is you walk up to people when they're uh, with others and you can't always uh, get in there to have a conversation. MacRail is pretty busy. If you don't know, MacRail's got all these detail parts so you can detail out your locomotives. Oh, looks like he's got something new coming out. How's it going? Good, Greg. We talked to you a little bit last year. Yeah. Back again. Back again. What's going on uh, with you? What's new? What's coming out? What's so we exciting? got new stuff. So we got some new things to show here. We got our cotton tops. Uh, so we have our cotton seed covers for your 61 foot and your 64 foot wood chip hoppers. We got these uh, wheel floats. So the fixture itself, decal set, and the wheel sets. They go on the car. There you get uh, 25 wheels in a set. You can buy a la carte and 25 wheels. Um, our boilers we came out around the National Train Show, but one of the coolest things is our coming this summer the lit. EOTs. So there'll be uh, an EOT that will come pre-lit, pre-wired, allowing the modeler to then choose the coupler they want to mount it on, and also um, what style of power. So they want to use battery-operated, you know, circuit or a track power circuit. So really excited about this. This is our demo, um, and we're working, working with East Coast Circuits as our vendor. They're actually oh. doing all the work for us. So you know, got some real LED professionals helping us uh, bring these to life. So. Yeah, I'm gonna. I gotta get over there and talk to Neil. He's, every time you go over to them, they're just. I mean, it's crazy. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Pretty excited. And this is actually this the demo is actually on a Atherin Genesis caboose that was equipped with a sound, a tsunami sound car board. So it was really easy to pop the top, two solder pads, boom, you're good to go. And you got an awesome looking flashing EOT. So uh, from a locomotive perspective. We got our release here of our 881 Black Box, which is uh, found on a lot of 40 East Coast and a lot of the Genesis and Wyoming short lines. They use this kind of PTC that's mounted on the uh, angle side of the cabs. And then our 883 here, which is a CP style uh, PTC antenna with the conduit external. So just kind of a neat variation of what we had. And that's it for the show, but some, some, a lot, that's exciting, a lot of stuff. If people want to find this stuff online or elsewhere, what's the best way to uh, yeah, reach out? Uh, we have a great website, macrailproducts.com. We're also on Facebook and on Instagram, so you can find us both ways. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Appreciate it.
Kevin's table just keeps getting more and more packed, so we'll go, we'll move on a little bit and try and, uh, try and come back. But Kevin is absolutely somebody that I want to have a conversation with. If I can't get it on camera, we'll get it somewhere else. So people were asking about BLI. Let's see. Let's see if we can make our way over to uh, BLI here about their uh, subscription program that they announced. If anybody sees anything else that they want more information on, just give a yell. A lot of stuff here at the show. A lot of different things going on. So that's Mike Dunstan over there. We talked to him yesterday. He has got a crowd of people over there from the uh, NMRA and from other people that love love the technology. He's just go to NCE then back. He's doing his thing. Split Rock Thomas was asking uh, where the tool guy was. This is the the tool guy that comes to this show. All the little uh, tools and stuff that you could want. Switches, connectors, uh, you know, a little bit of a little bit of everything is uh, is all in there. We'll keep uh, we keep heading over to the Better Living Center over to the direction of BLI, see if we can actually get to BLI. Does anyone want to see the bathroom? No? Okay, we can skip that. We're gonna go back out into the snow. Yes, the snow is here. Uh, BCF parts, why do you avoid the tool guy? Oh, it costs too much money. Yeah. <laughs> we were joking the other day is you put together a small bag of stuff, and next thing you know, that small bag of stuff is $300 worth of stuff. Everyone's kind of slushing around today, unfortunately. Luckily for me, I'm taking the train back tonight, so this weather will have little effect on me. And unfortunately for the show, but the lower numbers will help me get in and have some conversations with people that wouldn't get to have otherwise. So I guess there's some good and some bad in all of it. Thank oh, you very you much. Very, very, there they are. The way they set up the aisles, it's a little bit of a maze. And like you know where a vendor is, but to get there sometimes it's not always a straight line uh, adventure. <laughs> behind the Lombard Hobbies. Here's the BLI table. Looks like they're doing a raffle. Oh yeah. Oh really? Oh that's neat. So we'll see if we can get in here and have a conversation. Oh here end scale arrivals. For those of you that like that. Okay. Don't run away. All right. Nice to meet you. Thank you. 
That's right. <laughs> so Curtis, uh, I'm live streaming right now, and a couple yeah. of people mentioned a subscription program. They wanted me to come over here. Got it. Get some see details what on you it. You guys have uh, to offer. Yeah. So the Conductors Club is an exclusive club that we're offering for both HO and N scale uh, customers. Um, what it entails is you get a bunch of perks, and once a year, we're going to release an exclusive. Uh, never offered like paint scheme or road number of a locomotive that we've done for a, a significantly cheaper price. Um, instead of paying, you know, for let's say an FEF, uh, instead of paying, you know, five hundred plus dollars through a, a, de a retailer, we'd offer an exclusive paint scheme like maybe our 844 here with Greyhound paint scheme. We'd offer it to customers for about three hundred, three hundred fifty dollars. So it's an exclusive club. It's the $30 membership gets you that access to that. You get the ability to offer uh, product suggestions to us through a portal. So you get to personally tell us what stuff you want us to make. You get an additional 10% off our uh, outlet store. You also will get an additional year of warranty on all new BLI products from 2024 and in the future. So anything you purchase in 2024, 2025, 2026, if you're a member, when you go onto our service department, just tell them your membership number and you go ahead and you will get an extra year of warranty. So if it's a week or so past the warranty and you just missed it, you're gonna be covered because you'll get an additional year from your date of purchase. What lines are a part of uh, uh, the, the membership? Is it the Stealth stuff? The both, P4 Paragon stuff, 4, all of it. both Stealth and Paragon 4. And they would all be offered again at an exclusive price that you wouldn't find at your dealers and distributors. Um, so essentially the membership is how much money and then you would get? $30 and you'd have the opportunity to purchase a exclusive model. Like I said, an FEF3 so maybe. You get that 30 bucks every year. Correct, 30 bucks every year. And it's you get, like I said, the additional year of warranty. You get the extra 10% off our outlet store and you get a bunch of other perks. We've got a couple flyers on our table here that I can show it to you guys and you guys can see the full list. We also made an announcement on our social media channels. So if you go on our Facebook and Instagram page, you'll see the full list of some of the perks that we're offering. We want to do an exclusive members meetup where they would meet myself, Matt, Ken Silvestri, and a few others from the team. And you guys can tell us what you want us to make. Um, we really think that's going to be a great opportunity for people. I hear Ken, Ken Silvestri's on the screen over here talking yeah. in your ear the whole show. I know. Ken and wanted he's not to, even here. I know. Ken wanted to be here. He had an accident and he fractured his wrist. Oh, so no. he's he's out. He had to get surgery on it and everything. But he'll be at the next few shows we're going to be at. So if anybody's going to the world's greatest hobby shows in Cleveland or Indianapolis, the Rocky Mountain Train Show, uh, Train Fest, or the NMRA show, Ken will be there. And you're pretty new to BLI. How'd you guys? Yeah. How'd you join up? And uh, who, I, who are you? And why? Why are people talking to you? So I'm the director of marketing and social media. So I help manage our social media accounts. I help create uh, digital content for customers to know about what's coming out. I write the Broadway Flyer, our monthly newsletter each month. Um, I started back in March, so I'm approaching my first year of BLI, working with BLI this coming March, March 14th. Fast, right? Very quick. Oh my gosh, fast. very quick. My first time here at Amherst. It's a great show. Met tons of great people. So excited to see more people at future shows. And uh, I love giving people insight as to what we're doing. So um, hope you subscribe to the Broadway Flyer and other stuff on our social media outlet channels. And we'll share more about what's coming up in the near future. So now that we got the business out of the way, yeah, you want to show us some of the stuff you oh, got out here? Cause, absolutely. Cause well, let's start with our newest announcement. Pennsylvania Railroad Modelers are going to love this. We're offering a five-car set of uh, both in HO scale of our PB70 combine and our Z7040 business car. We're offering a 30s version, a 40s version, and a 50s version. And five car sets, you get a, a PB70 and you get a Z7040 baggage car, or a business car rather, and then you get three P70 coaches. If you want to purchase the cars individually, you can. We're offering six different versions of the business car and uh, six different versions of the combine car, two paint schemes per, or two versions of the road names per paint scheme. So two versions of the 30s paint scheme, two versions of the 40s, 50s, you get it. Um, so those will hopefully be coming out later this year. Um, interior lights, the business cars are going to have actual working tail lights that you can individually control. So those will be awesome to look on the back of any of your PRR passenger trains. Um, some of the new stuff that's coming out. Shipping out now is our GS4s, Paragon 4 sounds, and uh, we're having a second run of Stealth later this year. Um, these locomotives, like I said, shipping out. The first set shipped out on Friday. The second set shipped out or will ship out on Monday. So these will be in stores in the next 7 to 10 days. Another popular item is our HOC.
Class D Shea. What you're seeing here is our four truck Shea. It's a plastic body, three dependent plastic body, but we're gonna have it in die cast when it's all said and done, and the brass parts will remain brass. And uh, the reason why it's plastic is because we wanted to test the functionality of the gears here. Metal gears on the inside here, so they won't wear out as easily. And uh, we recorded the sounds from Cass Scenic. So Cass has our sound set, so we're gonna have those in there. They're gonna be great models, so we're really looking forward to those. Uh, new in stores will be over here, really these are our GP30s, Paragon 4. Um, great details, road specific details on these. And uh, these are in stores now. We're almost completely sold out on these. We're about 97% sold out. So if you haven't gotten an order in, now is the time to do it. And I know a lot of end scalers out there, I haven't forgotten about you guys. We've got, I'll move around the other side here. They've been patiently waiting for our end scale T1s. I, I'm an end scale guy, so. Yeah. So we got two samples here. These are the stealth versions. Here's our American Freedom Train version of the Reading T1s. Uh, these have just been wrapping up production. Hopefully we'll get them in early to mid-February. Um, we had a little bit of a setback at the factory, so these will hopefully be in in the next week or two um, once they get past customs and everything. So those are the newest end skill offerings here for Steam. Um, the Paragon 4 ones have smoke in these as well. SD40-2s are in stores now. Our N-Scale Late Challengers are going to be in stores later this year. Um, again, with smoke and recorded sounds from the 3985. And we've got some new other N-Scale smaller steam. we got the USRA Pacific and USRA uh, Mikados uh, also out there as well. So we got a lot of stuff coming up in the pipeline. And I'll give you guys a little bit of a tease. Some of you already know this, but we're working on an N-Scale the Santa Fe 3751 Northerns and the Union Pacific FEF3s in end scale. So those are currently in design. We're working on that. We have a couple more end scale steamers also working on in design, one of them being a Southern Pacific Cab Forward. And we've got a Pennsylvania Railroad H10. We've got two more that we're still trying to get the data package on, but we're not quite ready to tease that just yet. So we'll have two more end scale steamers hopefully in the future to tease, but those are the other ones that we're working on right now in end scale. So I, I'm going to ask the question. Uh, people have heard me ask the question before. All right. Uh, it's going to be a little direct. And yeah. I, I, I mean it with all of the best intentions in the world. Okay. But uh, I have experienced it, and I know other people have experienced some uh, quality issues with BLI stuff in the past. Okay. Uh, I've had significantly more success with the Paragon 4 stuff. Uh, a lot of people I know are very excited about the stealth stuff because yeah. they can put in their own uh, decoders and stuff like that. Yeah. I just, is there anything you can kind of say to people out there that may have experienced some issues in the Yeah, past? so we know Paragon 3 wasn't the greatest. Paragon 4, the purpose of re-announcing Paragon 4 was to fix a lot of the issues we had with Paragon 3, whether it be blown decoders, uh, smoke unit issues, what have you. Um, the Paragon 4 boards, all new motherboards, all new sounds, and all new, uh, basically everything. We redesigned the system from the ground up, and it's a lot more reliable now. It's a lot more, I know some people have still had issues, and that's going to come with everything once in a while. Other manufacturers have the same issues. Um, but for us, reimagining Paragon 4 was a must in order to keep people interested in our stuff. And so far, it's been knocked out of the park. We've had a lot of good success, especially with N-Scale steamers. We've had a lot of good success with Paragon 4. Um, and our HO scale stuff, too, we've seen a lot more success rates. Um, but we're, we're always working to try to improve on quality control. We know that's an issue. And people are paying a top price for these models. And we don't want them to get disappointed when they get a new model out of the box and it doesn't work right. So we're always trying to strive to get those fixed. And if you do have any issues, please contact our service department. Some people don't know that we have a service department and they'd be more than happy to fix those issues for you. Send it in, especially a lot of people don't know too that you get a year warranty on new models. And so if you do that and you bring it back to us, we're more than happy to, to do that swap and fix the decoder or fix any other issues that you might have. If a traction tire pops off or something like that, the guys are great. If you're friendly with them, they'll be more than happy to help you out with anything that you have problems wise. Um, and the, uh, the service program, uh, you go on your website, there's a form that uh, Correct. Yeah. So on our website, if you go under the support tab, you'll find out, uh, you'll find a tab that takes you to another uh, portal where you can register your model with us. 
you'll get an RA number and you'll be able to track as it goes through the service department and as it arrives to us, as they fix it. You'll be communicating uh, directly with your technician as we have four different technicians. All of them will be working on your models. You'll be able to communicate with them as to what you're looking to see fixed. Um, all that information is on our website. So if you go to broadway-limited.com, you'll be able to see that information and you'll be able to get that up to date. Thanks, Chris. No problem. I appreciate your time. Today. No problem. Uh, Thanks for stopping by. Show. <laughs> appreciate Thank it. Thank you. So, there you go. Where, where should we, where should we head? Where should we head next? I am spinning the base of my rig right now because I'm having a, a little bit of an issue. And I am trying to get something screwed back on nice and tight. It is cut loose. And it's looking like I'm going to have to put this down and do it. So we'll do that later. Should we head over maybe to, uh, to some of the other areas? Or is there anything over here that you guys want to see before, uh, before we head out of here? Yeah, BCF, you know, uh, I feel like you have to ask the question. I, you know, if I'm not asking the question, well, one, they don't, one, we don't get to hear from them. Very, very important uh, you know, to, to ask. Uh, JD, I have not bought you anything from OBR yet, but I bet you if you uh, if you send in your holy take it, and they will happily do. Here's the scale train booth again. Well, actually, we're in the. that are coming out. I like that they got QR codes on any, everything, so if people uh, want to purchase stuff, just click on those QR codes right on the screen, and it'll take you right to the website. And Cameron, I am not going to slow down and shop because that is what gets expensive, is slowing down and shopping. These are some of their new releases coming out. The GP40. I do not run Union Pacific at all, but this big glow turbine in N scale, I think it just looks so cool. So they definitely do it right over here at Scale Trains. There's some Trinity 82 foot reefers in both. HO scale and N scale. So, yeah, if nothing else, scale trains pulls out all the stops when they come to a show like this. It's always good to see what they have got going on. And if you're a fan, a virtual rail fan, you can see they've got the camera set up right there. So you can come and say hello to yourself. yesterday. So these are going in um, Atlas uh, FA, alcohol FAs that I bought. And uh, I bought prior to coming here, and I thought they were standard Atlas locomotives. And I was getting ready to put the standard drop-in 
decoders in them and I pop up the decoder and it has this uh, really interesting light board in it with a little 8 pin socket 18 pin socket I was like what the heck is this I'd never seen it before yeah. and it turns out uh, right now yes you I think is the only one that makes decoders that fit into the it's the it's the next 18 next connector. 18 yeah yeah, okay. yeah so so uh, what's your favorite thing of the show Oh, my favorite thing is uh, running uh, the layout, our uh, main track layout with my uh, friends and colleagues. Uh, guys come down from Canada and all over Maine and we put our modules together and have a fun time. Where, uh, where's the main track set up this year? Uh, we are right down this way. 66 down there. So, it, yeah. so you guys are the ones that have the, the snow modules. Yes, which that's are exactly. Of mine. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, uh, Jean Francois and uh, Steve, uh, our, our members from Canada, nice. make those. And appropriately, being the Canadian guys, they're the ones that have they snow on snow. their module. Yeah. Yeah. And they also really like uh, you guys have a module set up where people that come to the show can see the build process of what you know modular builds look like and from kind of start to finish which I think is something uh, unique and nice to have for people that might not know about modular building yeah and I think uh, a module is a great way to start a layout too because you can slowly add to it if you live in an apartment or you are gonna move planning on moving someday build modular you can pull it out put it back in uh, and our standard the uh, uh, main track standard is really pretty adaptable. It's got a two-line main. It, it looks standard, and uh, so it's a lot of fun. Good to meet you, Will. Yeah, good to meet have you. Have a too. great, uh, have a really great show. Yeah, yeah you, you too. Okay. It's really fun to see you in person. I know, right? It's so fun. It's I know, so different. I, I don't know. You, you get tired of people and, hey, is that you? Oh, okay. yeah. it's all part of it. I think I'm gonna go try and catch Jurgen over here. Yeah, well, have fun. Uh, see, see what he has to say. Thank you. There's the Bob from the Bob Zen scale over here. I know, I know. Hey, at least it's a bright, even light. We just have to get on that side. You're just a silhouette in black. Yeah. That's the way I roll, silhouette in black. Then in black, right? It looks like they're actually programming decoders over here at the show. Are you programming decoders for people? Yes, absolutely. So people can come to their show with their ESU locomotives and you'll help them? Their locomotive or their decoders, yep. We have a tester, programmer, and uh, get, your, get your decoder programmed. <laughs> HO scale only? HO, N scale, O, G, we have all tracks. That's fantastic. We have all decoders, whatever you need. Pretty good service right there. The two that I need. <laughs> People who don't know, this is what the different decoders look like. It's a little bright on camera. Not sure how well it's coming through. HO Power Train, it is a good place. Good place to get to for sure. Artie needs to reprogram a loco, does he have it here with him? If Artie has the locomotive here with him, he can, uh, and it's an ESU decoder, 
You can head over there uh, right now and uh, get it taken care of. So anyway, is there something you should do? If you want to get back to Superlogics, Uh, Ray, if he brought it, send him a message and tell him if it's an ESU decoder to make his way over there and they will get him all straightened out. I am sure. Got the raffle still going on. Oh, I, I don't know why. I saw it said Miller over here earlier. I don't know why it didn't click in that it's Miller Engineering. I just saw it say Miller Miller. <laughs> That's funny. It's all the Miller Engineering stuff. I kind of want to see if I can get in there because I have a question for them. I'd like to... Uh, the... EL circuits make quite a buzz, and it's just kind of uh, kind of the way it goes. But I'm wondering if there is if they have any suggestions on on, on you know how to uh, how to manage the sound. Just to see. Hey, Robert. Yeah. Could I uh, could I get you to talk to the people on the live stream about this uh, brand new club that you guys are representing here at? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Andy yeah. Steps, a friend of mine. So oh, okay, and I so live in New York. So not necessarily brand new. No, uh, it's a hundred years old. Yeah, the years. first model yeah. railroad club. In I don't know. First. We're, we're, we're the oldest, oldest. model engineering oldest. Uh, society in the United States. Uh, a bunch of the folks back in the early 20s uh, started meeting down in Wall Street area. And then from there, they created the uh, organization in 1926. And from that time on, you know, they were in New York for about 20 years, hopped over to Hoboken Terminal in 1947. And then they uh, moved to Colstead, New Jersey, our present home, where we are today. Uh, so we're kicking off the century anniversary. Uh, Bob, me, and a couple other guys have been down here. It's the first time in a long time we've been here yeah. uh, at Amherst. So it's uh, been a great event to uh, roll out and ring and toot the horn. And you're not just a, a model society. I know you guys have a lot of history uh, as well. Uh, when you walk into your space, there's a lot oh, of sure. other items and sure. uh, have some stuff with you here as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, the society originally, uh, you know, when you think about 1920s, you didn't have all the uh, manufacturers you have today, so it was in its infancy, the hobby. And at that time, uh, they had not just the uh, trains that they would actually fabricate, you had lathes and mills and those type of machinists who can actually do those type of things with rail plans and calibers to figure it out. Uh, but they initially started uh, with uh, tethered boats. Uh, tethered boats and our first president, Walter Elliott, uh, from, uh, uh, from New York. Uh, here is his uh, boat that he built and uh, engine that he built. And they used to race them in uh, Central Park uh, yeah. at the uh, Conservatory Lake. Uh, and uh, so it's been a great uh, history that they've had. And they just went from there and uh, we had some really great uh, members at the time, when you think of the Depression, uh, they were fortunate enough to uh, give us space in a lot of uh, popular buildings in New York City and Times Square. Uh, Astor, one of the sons of uh, Mr. Astor, went down in the Titanic, was a member. Uh, we had car manufacturer members, uh, Sugar Baron. It was kind of an elitist club back then, uh, but I can show you today we're much more blue collar than we've ever been before. What scales are modeled in, at the club? Uh, we do uh, two rail. Uh, o scale, uh, and we have uh, HO. Uh, the two rail O is uh, old school. Basically, if you want to see what a layout looked back in the 1950s, you come to our place and you'll see it. Uh, on the HO side, we're DCC. Uh, we're always changing uh, the layout, adding more technology. Uh, we're starting signal systems, assembly force we're putting up now. Uh, so it's really um, gearing towards the technology uh, of what we're trying to achieve today in the hobby.
And if people wanted to find out more information about the organization, and are you accepting members? And sure. Uh, obviously, we're in northern New Jersey, Colstead, New Jersey, 341 Hoboken Road. Uh, and uh, have our website, uh, modelengineers.org, uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, if you're in the business world, for, you know, we're on LinkedIn and so on. Uh, we're open on Wednesdays, most Saturdays. We have our shows coming up in early March, the first three weekends, swap meets in April. So we're always uh, trying to achieve and get around with the community uh, and so on to get them uh, involved with it. I know you do a, a partnership with Metca for your, the April show, I think it is. Yeah, we, we've been uh, partnering with the uh, Metca division of TCA. Uh, great partnership we've had for many, many, many years up at the uh, St. Joseph's Church in East Rutherford. Uh, that's April 6th, and uh, as always, we're expecting a great turnout. We have well over 100 tables. Great organization to be involved with, and we're really happy to be involved with it and keep moving along with that. And if anybody's wondering, East Rutherford is on the other side of the street from Karlstadt, which is on exactly. your side of the street. Exactly. Basically, so Hoboken, Road, the, yeah. Hoboken Road, you have Karlstadt on one side, and you got East Rutherford on the other side. Uh, and for that, to, for, for your football fans out there during Super Bowl time, we're right next to uh, MetLife Stadium. Uh, so like yep. maybe 10 minutes away from there. So we're not far at all from the major highways. Easy to get to. Fantastic. Well, I, I've been there. Uh, I've been there to see the O Scale Circus Train. I've been there when John brings his H O Scale Circus Train. Uh, I've been there a couple times just for other events. Uh, it's always had a good time. So yeah, uh, it's uh, a great environment. We're always asking people to come by, display their items, run their trains. Yeah. Uh, we want to make sure we get the word out. It's a great hobby that you know we should get involved with more and more. And, and that's what we're here. We're promoting the society. We want to make sure that the uh, society gets uh, to be aware of. You'd be surprised. 100 years old, we're still not well known enough, uh, and we still need to get out the word. And, and again, an organization with uh, Amherst up here, this is fantastic to be a part of. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Yeah, well, thanks a lot. Show, guys. Take Thank care. You. We're more than just trains. <laughs> uh, Harold, are you in... You live in Manhattan, Harold? Have we met? Um, there's a group that I'm going to plug called the Manhattan Modelers. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're, uh, we have a website. Uh, most of the stuff takes place on the Discord. But we are trying to find, you know, more modelers from the New York City area. So if you are in that area, uh, you know, please, please join us. We have uh, another meeting Tuesday night. So, you know, come out and see us. We have a train show every December, and we're wondering if you guys are interested in attending. Well, I can give the information to Eric. Sure. Well, we are from Rochester, New York. We have a... Uh... Looks like the train master is having a sale on their kits. Ed, thank you so much. I much appreciate that. The hardest part for me is getting in. Pushing, pushing through the crowd sometimes is not, uh, not really my thing, and I don't want to stand in one spot and uh, you know make you guys wait for me to be able to get in. I've been becoming a little bit fascinated with ON30 stuff since I've been here. We um, saw some of the ON30 modular layouts earlier and I believe that's the that's maybe the ON3. Harold, if you can't find it, uh, just message me and, and we'll get you uh, all set up. I was trying to swing back around to the Miller, but now I've completely lost where they are. I actually really like CMR. They're one of the few companies that do more uh, urban stuff. 
Uh, we back I haven't visited Bar Mills yet. They've always got quite the crowd of people. It's hard to get in there sometimes. But yeah, these guys do a lot of urban buildings in both HO scale and uh, N scale. you want to tell us a little bit about CMR? Uh, I would rather that... Too. Wait till for this guy? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm only this folks. Let's see, we'll, we'll head over here and we'll see if we can come back later. I'm like trying to find the holes, get in there, keep the pace going for you guys. Each page was two bucks. So here we are, Miller Engineering. I'm guessing a lot of people know their stuff. But I've got a bunch of their stuff. They make them in all different scales, all different sizes. Depending on the perspective, you can find the stuff. Yeah. Well, I hope today's okay. I don't have a lot of... Can you tell us about Miller Engineering, oh, what you guys goodness. make, what you guys do? Wow, you don't want me. You want the boss, Well, Chris. where's the boss? I can't find anybody oh, you today. you know what? Can you give him five minutes? Because he um, took a short walk over there. Oh, All right. like, but always he can a tell, short walk. He can, well, it will be a short walk. He can tell you everything. I'm his wife. I can tell you these signs are great. They're easy to use. Um, and we've been doing this for something like 20 years. But you want to talk to him because he can give you some really right, we'll great try, We'll try and can swing you do by one, when Can you do uh, one more lap? When he frees up. <laughs> he he <laughs> will be. Like I said, literally, he just took one more. Yeah, sharks. Yeah, it's hard to catch people sometimes. The, the, uh, today, there seem to be a lot of people that are trying to share what they're doing with the manufacturers and trying to uh, hand them different things. So uh, it's a little bit harder to get in and have uh, conversations with people. <laughs> okay. We already talked to one person at Scenic Express yesterday. Maybe we can find some more people to talk to. I guess right, I mean it's the it's on them. Dave, I have not talked to the guys at Lombard. They're not selling anything here. They just have uh, basically links to their website. So if you want to buy anything from them, you can just click on the website and head over to them and make some purchases. One of the great things about Scenic Express here at the show is they do these live demonstrations. And if I can stick the camera in here, you'll we'll be able to see. It looks like it's doing a static grass demo. You might want to be very specific about where you're going to place things like tufts and uh, strips of grass. So this is nothing more than a piece of screening that you can get at any hardware store. We go over a variety of things. I just built a little base to go on it. But anyway, it's grounded, so now I'm going to take this and put this like this. This is a piece of parchment paper. Regular ordinary parchment paper. That so you people keep mentioning Daryl Cruz. Who is Daryl Cruz? Should I know that name? Do I? Is it a, uh, is it a YouTuber? Anyone want to buy anything brass? Dave, what's his YouTube channel? Would I, would I know it? I don't think his YouTube channel is Daryl Krause.
Hello again. How you doing? I'm doing great. Good so to now see we're you at then. your table. So you're with Northlands. I am here to present Northlands. Northlands is actually recognized by Guinness World of Book Records for being the largest miniature wonderland. And yes, it's like it's like a really giant big place. You want like one of the biggest, largest canvas. It has like 100 plus trains running on it, and has a beautiful landscape. You can also see some of the stuff going on in the video as well. We also have like a, an actual outdoor train. So it's really amazing. We have one of the largest doll collection in there as well, as well as some like organ collection in there. So it's really amazing. It's and I hear you guys bought it about three years ago from Bruce, and you've been right. fixing it up and. For sure, uh, Bruce William de Canini was like the person who actually created the whole place. He started from his basement and expanded to like the whole big, big like 16 or 52 acre like place. Whole um, the mile track itself is like eight miles uh, like long for where the trains run. And in 2018, he uh, actually handed over. And then um, since then, we have been like upgrading and working on it, kind of like a continuous process. So it's really, it's really a fun place for all ages, I would say. Yeah, and you're located? We are located in Flemington, New Jersey, which is partially central Jersey. We are estimately, I would say, one hour from Manhattan. If that's like the best estimate, yeah. Yeah, so we've, we've done uh, some YouTube meet and greets over at Northlands. I've done one. Nathan DeLay has done one. Um, but check them out. Here's their, here's their postcard as well. You can go visit. So they're, they're keeping Bruce's dream alive and improving it and building on it. And, uh, yeah, so check it out if you're in the area. Thank you. Uh, so that was Howie's Brass Trains was uh, was the guys over over here. I'll get a there's their logo right there on the tablecloth, I guess you could say it, but uh, yeah, so they they do a lot of uh, a lot of stuff there. Uh, yeah, I so I know Daryl as uh, uh, Evanston Sub. I didn't know, um, I didn't know his name, but yes, I have seen his channel as well. We can walk over there and try and say hello. I'm not much of a name drop kind of person. Like I don't, you know. Big name, little name. It's all just about getting to know the different people in the hobby, which is what is the fun part for me. But I'll swing by and you guys can tell me if he's there because I don't know that I'd recognize him. Because most of the videos that I've seen on his channel uh, are of his operation sessions. Here's another brass train company as well, uh, resource rails on this side. So there's a there's a lot of brass here. A lot of brass to show. So I see an Andrew and Alex. <laughs> oh, and there's Daryl. Daryl, I'm live on YouTube and all these sure. people keep saying you gotta go talk to Daryl. <laughs> oh, great, great. And I said, Daryl who? And then they told me your YouTube channel. I said, oh, oh, oh that Daryl. You would have told me his YouTube channel, I know. <laughs> And I feel the same way about mine sometimes too. Like people just know me right. from my channel, and I'm, I'm reaching my so pocket. So, what, what channel are you from? I'm from a channel called Humanity Junction. Oh, okay. Humanity Junction, who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Nobody knows my channel. It's a small little uh, up and coming channel. I've hopefully. heard of it. I've, I've heard, heard of it. Um, but it's all good. Now, so now I'm waiting to see if people actually have questions for okay, you, okay. or if they just wanted me to come over and, <laughs> and say hello see my you. pretty face. So how did you become a famous uh, model railroad YouTuber? Um, I don't know. I started with my N-Scale layout. Uh, 
probably about 10 years or so ago, the Geneva sub. And I actually, I, I uh, put out DVDs a long time ago, like in the What's 2000. What's DVD? Can you explain yeah. that for us? <laughs> that, was, that was back in uh, 2003 or something. I had that, when I first built my layout in Rochelle, I uh, did some uh, DVDs and sold them. Uh, doing YouTube's a lot easier than <laughs> selling DVDs because everybody would uh, have issues with them and so forth. But anyway, then when YouTube started up, I, you know, transitioned into you know videotaping and you know uploading there and. And you um, left end scale. Yes. What What was the motivation to leaving the best scale well, of the hobby <laughs> and switching to a substandard end scale? scale? I would say end scale is probably the best scale in the hobby. Um, I I'm definitely, an -scaler, I, mean, I definitely, know. I loved N scale. I did it for 50 years, and um, really had a, a good time with it. And I really like uh, long trains, broad curves, uh, and then a, a high scenery to track ratio. You know, so you don't have you know a, a space where you get just chucked full of track and everything, but you know it looks a lot more realistic. Um, and uh, when we uh, retired and uh, downsized our house. Uh, we downsized to a ranch house, and I made sure I got a full basement, and so I actually had a lot more space uh, than what I had before. Because you're running some long HO scale yeah, trains, right, I mean, right. on your so, channel with the obsessions you right. show, those are some long yeah, trains. Yeah, and so actually when you, uh, you know, I still, I'm in HO scale, but I have long trains, broad curves, and a lot of scenery, you know, um, compared to how much track there is and so forth. So. Basically, I have the best of N scale, but uh, in N H O scale. How did you uh, first get into model railroading? I'm assuming it um, wasn't through YouTube. No, <laughs> it wasn't out yet. I uh, my my dad and I built some N scale layouts. So, you know, I started in the in the, like around 1970, and my dad came home with some Bachman. Uh, uh, I think it was a Bachman Jeep 40 or something. You know, with a huge the wide, very wide uh, um, hood and everything, and the details and, uh, on end scale back yeah, then. Huge, were very oh my gosh! So this is different. one of the very you know first end scale, you know, and and he we both kind of got uh, hooked on it. I was in middle school, so we built a series of end scale layouts. So then, just in case there's one person that doesn't know what your channel right. is, do you want to just uh, yeah? So uh, um, so just it's U P R R Evanston Sub. So if you search for that, uh, you'll de it should definitely come up. Much bigger channel than mine, so <laughs> it should be easy to find. Uh, thanks for your time. Oh, you're uh, welcome. Really you're welcome. appreciate it. Right. Have a great show. Have you been it, here before? No, it's my first time here. Oh, well then I gotta ask, what do you, what do you think of this? It's huge. Uh, they have a train fest in uh, Milwaukee that I went to a, uh, a couple years ago, and, and that, how that was real. That was real big. Um, but they, it's not near as big as this. I think they had maybe two buildings, you know, like this, and uh, not four. So this is definitely Have the biggest one. Have you gotten one. all the way to the Mallory building yet? Oh, yeah. Here? Yeah, okay. I've been pretty much everywhere. I haven't really bought anything yet, yet but. Uh, That's what I keep saying. I'm, I'm video, you know, I'm doing live streams, right. so I don't see something I right. want to buy and end right. up buying it. Right. But, uh, well, I buy everything at Lombard Hobby, so I, I don't. <laughs> good plug, good plug. I like it. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Good, good to meet you in person. You're welcome. Appreciate You're welcome. it. Have a great show. Yep, you too. Uh, UPRR Evanston Subdivision. Oh, uh, So, HO Powered Train, while I do agree with you, I find that people uh, use optimizers and stuff. For uh, HO scale as well. Get in there, you know, and see a little better. This might be the gentleman that I should be speaking to. Yes. If I can get within an inch of, of Miller and Dan. Okay. I'm putting a 
business card in here in case you have any questions. Excuse me, when you have a moment. Yeah. You were speaking to your wife earlier, and she said to uh, wait for the bus to come back, and you could tell us all about Miller Engineering and what you guys do and what you're up to. Sure, sure. And who's this for? Uh, we're live on YouTube right now. I have a small little YouTube channel, and I've been covering the show for the last couple days. Oh, great. Uh, you can great. check me out there. Very good. So, say when. You're, oh, we're, we're, we're live. live. There yeah. are 128 people waiting to hear what you have to say about Miller Engineering. Great. Yeah. Well, you're at the booth of Miller Engineering. We make uh, neon, simulated neon signs for model railroaders. Been in business uh, 29 years now making them. <clears throat> we have over, uh, I think, 250 different signs to choose from. Did you start the company or are you yeah, the I start, engineer? I started the company in 95. And I'm the designer of them, and I'm the one who came up with the idea. I'd used this material in my previous job, and uh, <clears throat> the first sign we brought out was a little diner sign that I hand cut out with an X-Acto knife, and that's how it all started. And what scale signs do you uh, make? We from Z to O scale. Fantastic. And they're uh, all EL wire? Yep. All e electroluminescent technology is what we use for all our signs. It allows the signs to be paper thin, which is what, which is what creates the wow factor. Yep. And you've got quite a display set up here. I do notice a little buzzing. I'm wondering if that's, I know, part of the nature of EL wire. Yep. It's the electronics. They'll always make a little bit of sound, but when you... When the electronics are mounted in the building, which they usually are, you never hear the sound. If people want to purchase some of your products, where's the best place to find out more They can go online at our website, which is microscrew.com, or just type in Miller Engineering Lighted Signs, and you'll it'll be the first hit that comes up on Google. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Good. I have many, many of these. Great, thank you. Thanks. The guy finally walked away at CMR. And let's see if I can catch him before he starts talking to somebody else. I'm, I'm moving a little bit closer. I know you just spent an hour talking to that last guy. But I saw him leave. He wouldn't go away. I really wanted to come talk to you and see your stuff. I uh -huh. model city scenes. Oh, cool. You're one of the very few places yep. that sell That's our little city niche. prototypical yeah. things. Yeah. So will you tell us who you are, what the company is, what you guys so, do? So the company is Custom Model Railroads. We're based in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. And we build a series of large city structures in both HO and N scale that are kits. They're uh, laser cut acrylic. Acrylic just cuts better than styrene. It basically glues together and paints the same way. And uh, they are all based on real buildings. They're not exact models. They're really good representations. And they, um, they come in, um, they come with these. This is the basic kit, and then this is an add-on unit. And you can build the add-on units and make the buildings as tall as you as you want. So you've already kit bashed your kits. Already kit bashed our kits. That's right. Yep. And yep. Uh, how do you guys decide what buildings to build? So most of our kits come out of commissions or other projects that we're building. We do we do commission work. We also build layouts for people. And so oftentimes we um, we have a specific building that somebody needs. So, so a lot of these buildings are from St. Paul, Minnesota, because we did a big project there. Yeah. And a lot of them are from Baltimore, because that's where we live. And the rest of them are mostly from Chicago and New York. Yeah. I would love to see some more New York ones. I'll just, put, I'll yeah. just throw that so in there. So we just came out with these Brooklyn, these Brooklyn houses down here. Uh, my daughter moved up to Brooklyn and was living on State Street, so we, we modeled a couple of the buildings on the, the block she was living on. Do you do you scan them or from pictures or how do mostly you from pictures? If, if we can get if we can get plans, we'll use plans. But usually it's just from pictures. We're not we're not being that detailed that we need that we need uh, that we need plans. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm an N scaler, so it's yep. impressive too that a lot of your stuff. Yeah, we do we do everything now. We do everything in H O and N scale. Yeah. 
So everything. So everything we do now. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple older kits like this one and the power plant that we only did in HO. Okay. But moving forward, everything we do is, is in it, both scales. In fact, we start in end scale because it's easier to scale the model up than to scale it down. Because oftentimes we'd, we'd build it in HO scale and then we'd scale it down to end scale and we'd find we couldn't get our fingers in somewhere or something just didn't work. Right. So so we just started end scale now and, and expanded up. So when you up. say something didn't work, so you don't just sort of design them and cut them. You actually, like, it sounds like you build them and then make Sure, so the process is, you know, we, we draw the parts and then we build what we call study models where it's just the walls. We have maybe haven't even cut the windows out of them yet, just to create forms and make sure all the tabs and slots are going to fit. And then and then we then we work in some more of the details and we build another study model. By the time we come out with a kit, we probably built the thing a dozen times. Yeah. And you said yeah. we, is it a family business? No, it's a, it's, I have uh, two employees and uh, I've got a big commercial building and we've got uh, two large uh, laser cutters that are commercial laser cutters. They're not the little hooded ones that you, that you see. Uh, they're made by a company in uh, Minnesota or Wisconsin called Kern Electronics. They're a great company. And, uh, and so, yeah, we have a 7,500 square foot building we work out of that we, that we build our, our kits, custom commissions, and then uh, layouts, layouts as well. Yeah. And I notice everything's very like colorful and whatnot. That I'm assuming is all stuff that you or somebody in your company has painted. The, yeah. The so the kits start out; they're all white plastic. White. Okay. So in order to build one of our kits, you have to be able to glue and you have to be able to paint. That's the that's the skill set. And you, well, <laughs> that's. <laughs> I guess I'm out. Yeah. No. Well, I just I just got my my, my guy Dave, who's who's young, and he'd never built a Campbell's kit. Yep. So I picked him up a Campbell's kit because we were talking about it at dinner the other day. There you uh, go. Yeah, I would, when I was a kid, I would, you know, I'd get halfway through the kit and realize I'd used the, the two by sixes, thinking they were the two by fours. At that point, the instructions went out the window, and I just made the thing. And so I, I was like, as 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 a model builder, you have to go through this experience. Yeah. I I just bought a kit here at the show, and being an end scaler, I was like, I think I'm going to practice on a few other maybe larger kits first right. <laughs> and then and then uh, work yeah. my way up to it. Yeah. Uh, I asked you this question yesterday or maybe it was Friday, but I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit here. Uh, people like me who are a New York City-based mother don't have the space for the four walls and uh, whatnot as well. Have you considered or could I convince you by asking you on camera uh, to start considering uh, making low relief uh, we have as we well. have discussed it over the years it, for whatever reason it's never come to fruition um, it's it's certainly something I would consider and David and I were actually talking about it yesterday that that there's really no reason as we develop kits that we couldn't that we couldn't do that um, I don't think it makes sense for us to go back and convert our old kits into into that. Um, but maybe moving forward, that's something we could do. We did do it with our city station. So our city station over here. So this, this building, which is available in, in HONN scale, is sort of uh, multiple kits. You, you can buy the, the station, and you can also buy the station as just a facade, so it goes back to the first window. Because oftentimes people want to build this up against the wall. And then the concourse is a separate kit, and then the, to extend the platforms, that's a third kit. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. So this one, this one, maybe you would say this is the first one we've done that with, where you can buy it as a, as a facade. Yeah. And obviously, people can buy your kit and just, you know, cut them up. Cut them up too. Yeah, they're a little harder to cut up than a styrene kit. Okay. Because you really can't cut them with a knife. The acrylic's really dense. So you're going to need like a, a one of those Microlux table saws or a band saw or something something to cut them with. It's, it's, it's not something you can just go out with it exactly. And with your kits, what sort of glues and stuff do you need to put them together? So we use a, a solvent type adhesive, you know, one that melts the plastic and, and welds it together, like like the Plastruck glues or the TEDx glues. I've never tried MEK, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, we used to always recommend people use 10X, but unfortunately 10X is a company that went out of business a few years ago. Um, and then we prime them with uh, just Krylon gray primer right out of a rattle can. 
Okay, you prime them so they come to no, no, no. You, when oh, we you built, you, if you, I was building them. it, gotcha. Sorry, I prime okay. them with with gray primer, yep. uh, inside and out. Because if you don't prime the inside, the building will glow if you light it. Right. And then I top coat that with just acrylic hobby paints. Yeah, I've been using the uh, the Mission Model paints lately, and they airbrush beautifully. I'm not endorsing them. But they don't pay me. So are but, you a model yeah. railroader? Were you a model builder? I or? was a model builder. Okay. I'm not as in, interested. The trains are fun and all that, but I'm, you know, I don't know the difference between a Dash Eight and a Dash Seven. I, that's somebody else's hobby. I don't either. Yeah, but so so that's yeah, that's not my thing. So we we build models of other stuff too. We we build architectural models. We build industrial models. And we build models for the Department of Defense that I can't show anybody. And we build. Okay, and we built some museum exhibits that are not necessarily train related. Yeah. So to kind of to put it this way, but not put it this way, this part of the business is a, is a side that it's, feeds no, into the other. They're parts. all they're all equal. They're all sort of equal. They all okay. they all feed off of each other. But but this is probably the largest side of the business. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that okay. the the layout building. Yeah. Yeah. I I asked because there are a lot of cottage industries, for there lack are. of better words, that are getting into this business, mm -hmm. um, and especially as laser cutting and stuff right. changes. But you guys have right. much bigger laser cutters than your average person. We do. Person, so. We do. We have a higher production level probably than the, the, the cottage industry guys. Yep. Um, and I've been doing this for 30 years. So. This you know, business for 30 this years? This business for 30 years. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize that. At least, since 91. Yeah. Oh, that's more than 30 years. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, yeah. Start, don't start yeah. counting, because then yeah. I'll start counting. Yeah. So, so. Yep. it's fantastic. I always enjoyed seeing your stuff Thank coming you. here to the show. I love that you're, somebody is doing yep. city-based yep. stuff for us. Yep. Can uh, I plug the website? Model. Oh, sorry, 100%, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, Custom Model Railroads is the name of the business, and the, the website is just custommodelrailroads.com, or you can go to cmrtrain.com. Fantastic. And uh, that's where, yeah, that's where you'll find us. And people can buy any of this you stuff on the site? You can buy it all online. You can download the instructions. Below each kit, there's a download button, so you can download the instructions if you want to preview it before you put it together to make sure it's something you can do. Because I don't want to sell somebody a kit that's that's more involved than, than they're capable of putting together. Yeah. It's, these are not kits for beginners, but they're also not terribly complicated. Yeah. And just yeah. just to mention it as well, the, the price point is a kit that is a more detailed kit. It is. Yeah. yeah. The prices of our kits tend to range from a hundred to four hundred dollars, so they're yeah. they're not something you want to mess around with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Thank you so much. Good talking to you. <laughs> Have Take a great care. day. Hello. Yeah, Harold, I would love to get uh, some of these buildings. Tom, have you ever put uh, have you ever put one of those buildings together? I know you've built a lot of uh, different craftsman kits. I'm gonna make my way back over to the young building. I want to see if I can talk to the SuperLogics gentleman, because I did have a really great conversation with him uh, last time I was here. Just another conversation. Why isn't it recording? There it goes. I'm recording. No, I'm not recording. I'm live. It says live. There's 137 people staring at you right now. Hey, guys. So who are you? My name is Frank. I currently have a channel called Tinker's Workshop. Um, I just started. Haven't got the branding sorted out yet. It's just kind of new. Uh, and I'm here getting footage. You know, I'm not live yet, but whatever. But, hey, you know, you gotta. But that's so quite a rig you've got. So watch this live and then go later to your channel right. and watch uh, your view of the. So what do you got here? Tell you, I got a shot of your your gear here. You can tell people on my video what it yeah. is. So I, essentially, what I have is a gimbal. Right. Two iPhones. One, one iPhone is the camera, and one iPhone is giving me chat, so right. I can see all the comments of the people that are watching my stream. And then I've got a shotgun mic up on top. Right. It's got a front mic and a back mic, so they yep. can hear my nonsense, and then they can hear your brilliant. That's a great idea. As well. 
And yeah, we've just been carrying this around. He's got, and, his, uh, he's got his strap. So this is what he sees, guys. Yeah, there's, there's quite the quite the setup as well. I do have the chat there, but yeah. this one's easier to scroll yeah, through is. and mess That's with. That's a great idea, too. The camera. So there you go. And I know if my stream is working, too. So everybody wondering. like, comment, subscribe? They, oh, dude. <laughs> here, if you, if you scan that, it'll take it right to the... Right to my Great channel. idea. Have fun, man. See you later, Frank. Young building, here we come. Back out into the It is definitely snowing harder right now. The show numbers definitely weather dependent because the lines out here at 11:44, not as many people walking in the parking lot as there were yesterday. But as you can tell, still a lot of still a lot of people here though. It's hard to get up to the tables and talk to people still. So there is a lot going on. Uh, Thomas, it is definitely not as busy as it was uh, yesterday. All right, so now we're taking a little bit of a detour back through the young building. Hey, Dan. May I steal you for a second to talk about who Tangent Models is and what you guys are uh, showing here at the show today? Well, sure. Who are you? What are you with? Uh, my name is Heath. I'm with a YouTube channel called Houston Junction. Okay. And we're live on YouTube. There's 130 people that okay. can't make it to the show. Howdy, everybody. But wish they could be here. And uh, Tangent is a favorite of people's. So I wanted to uh, stop by. And, uh, well, sure. Come on. on, come on over here. We'll, we'll show you the new. Car. All you have, all you have to do. Is... So for today, we are yesterday we released a brand new car, a Pullman Standard uh, uh, quad covered, a uh, quad open hopper. So we did it. Uh, it's a ball, uh, Best Marin Lake Erie car. We did it in both the bicentennial scheme and the Core Ten. Uh, paint job. So we're pretty excited. It's a new car for us. We, Those of you guys that have been paying attention noticed we did uh, an IC Centralia coal hopper last month and the previous month before that it was a Bethlehem uh, L&N and Clinchfield car. So we're kind of storming through coal country here a little bit with some coal options. So we're pretty excited. What does Tangent focus on in, in the market? Uh, well, Tangent focuses on freight cars and cabooses. That's really our shtick. You know, we're going to uh, a lot of companies do a lot of other things, uh, locomotives, things like that, but we focus on freight cars. We focus on the middle part of your train, on the end part of your train. And the, the detail level of the products you put out, where would you say you fall in the... Well, we're, we're making them as detailed as possible. You know, we have standards we like to keep, like... Uh, Real wire grab irons, real KD couplers, uh, metal wheels with detail on the front and back, uh, yeah, uh, uh, accurate artwork, accurate paint colors, all those types of things. You know, I want to make it as nice as I can, but still make it runnable at the end of the day. Because you know, after you purchase this, I still want you to be able to take it out of the box, plop it down, and uh, have a good time. The only thing you have to do, add a little bit of dirt if you like to weather your equipment. So. Absolutely. Uh, Dan, if people want to find out more about what you guys have here, what's a great place to go and get it? Yeah, so we're on the web 24-7, www.tangentscalemodels.com. Fantastic. Yeah, it's Dan, good seeing so you guys. Much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. We'll go walk by the S scale layout again.
kind of like this layout because they've got the uh, the camera car going. Uh, Andy Estep, Este Pandy Projects, is right there. He doesn't see me, but I see him. Got a little 050 action going on. I don't tell anybody. It's not on camera, don't worry, nobody's watching. We had a fantastic conversation with these guys the other day. These two gentlemen right here took some time okay. during their setup to talk to us. We're back to see what you guys are doing. Ah, yes. How are you? There's your little uh, your banjo guy. Let me let me zoom in. Hold on. Can you, so, hear, can you hear the sound well? Yep. Okay. So these are things that you scratch built yourself. Yes. These are things that came out of your head, ended yes. up on the tracks. Yes. You got any ideas? I'd like to make something else. Uh, is the, does the power come from the tracks? Yes. All from the tracks. And you said you had a dinosaur car? Right over there. but it's so much noise in here you can't hear it. Dance. So all all made from that gentleman right there. Including Charlie Brown. I've got a little sign like the Charlie Brown sign. That's right. Thanks guys, it's great meeting you the other day. It's gonna be on YouTube. Yeah, it's on right now. What what is it under? So I've been walking around. It, it'll all be up there. All right, thank you. Thank you guys. I love to be here to see all this stuff. The uh, like the old Apple and blue boxes and stuff. all here. It's all out and about and around. Alright, we're going to go to Superlogix. Mike looks like he's a little busy. So we're going to pass on by him for now. You know, let's, I'm going to try and see if I can meet this guy over here. This guy I met on the first day. He saw my setup and started talking to me and told me about what he is up to and doing. So I thought we could go, uh, go say hello to him. This is a G-scale layout that we are walking past right now. I wanted to introduce people to you. I'm st I'm streaming now, and we had a good conversation the other day. Right. And I thought the people that were here, I get 130 people. I thought I'd come over and say, you got to meet this guy. Who is this guy? What is he up to? And uh, wanted to hear a little bit about your story. So what what's going on here? Well, we sell vintage subway, mostly New York subway memorabilia. And some from trolley memorabilia, and some stuff from other cities. We have um, videos of many subjects, including New York City, but uh, other cities, trolleys. And um, we also have a lot of trains. 
I'm thinning my collection. So we have uh, Lionel trains. Most of this stuff was never uh, taken out of a box. So let's see. And you guys know what this is, right? I, I do. I don't know if everybody else does. Okay. Tell us you ever what hear it is. of a strap hanger? Well, this used to be on the roof, and you'd ride the subway and hold on to this if there were no seats. So when the straps turn metal, that's. They did that. Believe it or not, there used to be leather straps before yep. the, the first pandemic in 1918 with the Spanish flu. Oh, that's and why they changed the metal. They went to porcelain, actually. Okay. This one, this would be more what they would have. This way they were easier to clean. They figured the leather was holding the germs. Yep. And we got a sign. This sign is very rare. There were only 10 cars made. It was an R11 subway car in 1948. And there were only 10 cars. How do you, how do you say the name of the town that's on there? Canarsie. Is that the Brooklyn pronunciation? Yeah, that's it. It's it. Well, Canarsie was an Indian tribe. Oh, okay. So right. that's where the name came from, the Canarsie Indians. Gotcha. And um, we got the Schmohawks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the sign behind it came from 1930, 1940, New York subway car. And uh, all sorts of good stuff, so come on down. How, if people wanted to reach out to you, what's, uh, how should they find you? You can go to our website, subwayal.com, and we have a Facebook page, Subway Al. I don't know if you could see that. or. We can, we can. Do you, so do you have uh, any more of this stuff at, uh, at home as well? Yeah, we have, we have stuff. We have um, eBay sales where most of it is on. Yeah. So, um, and if you get... How did you get into all this? Uh, you're gonna need another hour and a half. So. Well, I I got about five minutes. Can you make? Can you tell me in five minutes? Uh, let's see. My parents made the mistake. We lived in Brooklyn. Two mistakes. The first mistake, they bought me a Lionel train set, <laughs> 1958. I still have the set. And the other one, my father used to take me on subway ride. I used to love riding the subway. So every Sunday we would go to a different place. And we'd start out, we lived in East New York, Brooklyn, get on the Canarsie Line, go up uh, New Watts Avenue Station or Livonia Avenue, and just go somewhere different. And so a lot of times he'd take my friends, and um, that's how it all started. And then with the Trolley Museum, that was a brochure I saw on the Connecticut Turnpike. Yeah. And I kept trying to get my father to, and mother to take me there. We have relatives in Meriden, and he would go and he'd say, next time, next time. And well, I was the human GPS. I was always good, even at like seven years old, I could read maps like and directions. So I would give him the directions. I purposely made him miss the connector. And then 91 was brand new. I said, oh, we could take 91. Purposely made him miss 91. We go over to Kew Bridge. And I said, well, you know, the museum's right here. And that was my first visit. I was 12 years old. Yeah. Oh, got a customer. You got a customer. Good. Yeah, go. Great to meet you. Thank you. Really great to meet you. Yeah, we're going to take a break, I guess. Okay. That's what I love about this place. That's what I love. These guys like that. Narcy Lines, your old line? Yeah, I met him on the on the first day. I was just walking through, and you know, very friendly guy came up, said hello. Uh, so I just I wanted to get a chance to introduce everybody to him. Um, it's night ninety six. If anybody's looking for a small train, you got the big one in the middle. There's a big one. So this is uh, Ray, who, this, this guy there is Ray from Bachman, who is their large scale guy, and I'm guessing this is his counterpart over at uh, Merklin.
Yeah, Thomas, it, it is, uh, oops, sorry about that, it has blown up. The show has just gotten huge. Kevin's still over here doing his thing. Bar Mills guys are having way too much fun over here. Hey Art, when you're done feeding people, I was wondering if you'd take a second. I think most people know who you are, but uh, yeah, but it's not always a good thing. Well. People know the fun side of you. Should we talk about the business side a little bit? <laughs> well, the business side is... You, wanna, we, you can put that down. I can follow you around if you want. Is that on right now? I am on right now. We actually okay. have 130 people watching. Oh, okay. Uh, watching the show. People that couldn't come here. Did you catch me with the popcorn, huh? Of course. Yes. Yeah. The, well, the, we'll the, cut the, that clip out. We'll send it over yeah. to you later. The idea of the hobby is to have fun. So if we can share, have, have some fun... And hopefully you'll learn something, or hopefully we learn something from you because it's a two-way street. And basically, we ran out of space here this year at Springfield. We en ended up moving things around because we have so many O-scale things. And it turns out we're adding more HO, especially in the beginner end of things. It's important that we introduce people, especially if you're a modular builder where you have to ca carry a, a, a modular layout system in the back of your trunk or in your back of your wagon or your truck, whatever it is. You know, when you deal with high-end kits, they get very, um, well, they get particular. You spend 50 hours on a kit, and you don't want to bang it up in the back of your car. So we're starting to do things for modelers that uh, are maybe a little less experienced, experienced or people that are honestly just wary about putting high-end kits on, on a diorama, on a big diorama as a module, okay? So at anyhow, um, so Art, your company is Bar Mills, right? We this is our 23rd year here at Springfield. Uh, it's our 25th anniversary. First two years they wouldn't let us in, <laughs> uh, which is odd. And uh, since then, um, we've become at least in this building. You know, with this yellow here, we're easy to find. I think people come here and use this like you'd use the GPS in your car. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're just loud and noisy and obnoxious. Where, where is XYZ well, in relationship to Bar Mills, I can tell you. Yeah, we're right in the middle of the whole convention, really. Uh, a lot of guys like the next building over, which is like the Pentagon, I think it's five-sided. It's odd to find your way yeah. around. Yeah. Um, but when they come here, we lead to something called the Stroh Building and something called the Mallory Building. And these are great buildings. But this building, we've been offered to go into a bigger building. but. You know, we're from Maine. We're not used to anything, you know, really with too many people. So, at any rate, uh, I've got to show us a couple of the things you got. Oh, uh, well, these are O-scale things, so I don't know how many guys care about O-scale. I mean, the, there's O-scalers. There's uh, Tom Kovicek is here. Oh, uh, oh Tom. Trains I, and things I, yeah, here, he's so a good friend of mine. He's a good guy, yeah. Uh, there's N-scalers. Uh, there's uh, yeah. people of all scales. Are Tom is one of the best, though. So, Tom, if you're watching this... You know, I know you, you wrote me about having a good show, and it's working out really well. We did $1.2 million yesterday. Uh, <laughs> at any rate, these are all O-scale kits. Normally, these aren't even displayed in this area. Over here is what we normally use as a, uh, a secondary clinic area from Mike Tyler, who's an amazing model. But we had too many kits, so I think next year we're going to cut back a little bit. And if we walk around, you'll see, I think, what the most attractive part of our whole display for people is a padded floor. <laughs> uh, a lot of people, I think, are more, more in, involved with that than the actual models, which stretch. And these here, again, this is O scale. The premier stuff that we do, the really high-end and limited stuff we do, is enclosed in this area here. And uh, we did this about six years ago where we started putting up these posts and adding full color graphics and you know it's not even about buying kits it's, it's a matter about seeing the potential of what the hobby can be and uh, people come here that have no no involvement in the hobby but 
you look at it and you kind of wish you did. And that's a, that's an important thing. So it's all about growing the hobby, sharing it, and having some fun. And if you want some popcorn, you got to show up. Okay? And, and you know what? We have Rice Krispie treats, but don't tell anybody. That's the next. So right now I've got I've got a gentleman waiting for me, and I appreciate all your time. Before it, you go, yeah. though, Art, real yeah. quick. Uh, for those that can't come to the show this year, but might come next year, but for now, if they want to buy these kits, what's the way they should uh, well, be able to find Well, you know, your stuff? Some, of the, some of the consumer level kits have gone through hobby shops and Walders. Um, the, some of the really high end stuff I can see behind me here. You know, you know, know what it is, our website. We know, people ask for business cards, I don't know yeah, why. That's true. Uh, if you just go to Bar, if you type in Bar Mills, we are like the only company in Bar Mills. BarMillsModels.com, and you're going to be able to see me, which is really not going to be the best part of the experience. Okay, not the best thing to lead with Art's face. No, but, not, me. not me, not uh, me. But we we have videos there, and we have information about the kits, and uh, we don't keep up with it as well as we should. It's one of those things I think a lot of companies that are not professional companies, we're just a mom and pop kind of an operation. Uh, with a million adopted friends here who help us out, uh, the customers and all. So that's how you get in touch with us. I got to go. You can use PayPal or whatever. And I see I'm going to be handed something here. My that's God, a, if a, you want to see this conversation. A, a $100 bill. I can't yeah. thank you so much. Art, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, man. You got to do it. Yeah. There's some of the other stuff they got over here. <laughs> yeah, they are beautiful kits. If you want to see somebody putting them together, you, you could go to the Bar Mills site. They have some. But I know uh, Tom from Tom's Trains and Things on his YouTube channel, he also has some videos of him building some of the Bar Mills kits. I didn't, I, I, I always forget until I come to the show just how much stuff Bar Mills actually has. Definitely a specific era that they do specific style short. but there is definitely a little bit of everything in that style and art is right walking on their foam floor is very nice walking back behind their thing. Kevin here still has a huge crowd. Maybe we'll just head over into the, the Mallory building, back over in that direction. And we'll have to uh, try and come back at a later time to catch and see how he is doing. That's interesting. Motorized track cleaning cars. This is, what company is this? MNP. Oh, you see that? Sorry, it's right here. Let's see. MNP, many new products. And some Acro Rail stuff down here. Little do the math, rotating disc. Other roller cleaners. Ah, I see. So they're promoting they're promoting that the disc underneath it spins this way instead of just rolls. And they have a bunch of track cleaning cars. Oh, and they do even have an end scale track cleaning car. So they have an S scale, HO scale, O scale. Oh, that's an interesting idea. We're track cleaning car standstill. 
Will your track cleaning car work when it's standing still? Ours will, so you can stop over a, uh, you know, a spot that needs a little extra cleaning. This N-scale cleaning car here is a DCC. Looks like it's available mid-October. I don't know if that's October of uh, next year or if it was October of last year. I do not see anybody at the booth, but I might be grabbing one of their cards because I am always up for interesting methods of cleaning. Only name in motorized track clean. Huh. Interesting. I can't get the can't get the stuff in my pipe. I just noticed it is coming down outside. Oh, yeah. oh. Excuse me, guys. Seems like some of the vendors over on this side, no, uh, nobody's here at MTH either. Slushy, it's icy. Watch your step, people. Watch your step. Be careful. Wiley Scale Modeling Podcast. Do they have videos of them uh, doing the kits? Or was it more just talking about the kits? I, I know on their Facebook page, uh, I believe they've got a bunch of kits and stuff. Because those guys do uh, some good modeling. These are the days when the diehards come out. I think it's funny you guys are talking about Tim Hortons. Hey, Grandpa Rails, will you look up whether those N-scale available uh, cars that said they're coming out in October to see if it meant this October or if it meant um, that they're already out? I would appreciate that. Heading into the Mallory building. This gentleman has a sign on his table that says 50% off any item on the table. Always a popular or table. Oh. Fifty percent off that table. Fifty percent off this table. So you can get a Klaus candy cane for twelve bucks. Looks like the end scale stuff is down here. I know I should not be stopping and looking, especially I should not touch and look, because once you touch it, sometimes it ends up purchased. And we definitely don't want that to happen. Right, yep, so 50% off all of this stuff. Here's the uh, Bachman PRR cars and end scale. Good looking stuff. I walked by these guys the other day. I think this is a very interesting uh, company that does this stuff. Uh -huh. Since they add all of these loads and stuff to their. John, I know it's 50% off, but it's 50% off something I don't need. And I don't know if it's 50% off I don't need whether I should 
where I should uh, yeah, where I should get it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to avoid getting things I don't need. Yeah, that is true. Last thing. although the guy with the 50% table, he's always 50% off. Jim is talking to somebody, but I'm gonna try and get his attention, maybe. Let's see if I can. We do have a lot of that's the famous YouTuber, Jim Williams. Also, uh, after the trains. Yep. And it's super easy to chase trains. Yeah, basically. Well, Jim's busy. See, Jim's the famous YouTuber. So we're live on YouTube right now. So I was going to give Jim a hard time being the famous YouTuber of the group. But since he's busy, would you be able to uh, show us around the booth and uh, tell us what's new and upcoming? Sure. Well, um... Everything we have on the pedestals today uh, are products that are in stock right now or just about to be in stock like within the next week or so. So these are all products that have been announced in the past and are just about to be delivered here. Uh, we're showing off our SW1000s, our SW15000s, SD40s, SD38s, um, SD59s, Jeep 7s, N-Scale Challengers, and then an uh, assortment of HO and N-Scale freight cars. Now, I noticed you don't have a lot of N scale stuff here, but you do actually have a lot of N scale stuff as well. It's, uh, yeah, we do, I mean, we, do, we still sell quite a bit of N scale, and, and uh, we have a lot in development. Some of the new N scale freight cars um, aren't quite ready yet, but they're in production, and we're going to see our final samples here in a few weeks. Um, what, uh, you have stuff coming up? soon as well. It's yep, and then on the table is, is where the, the fun, exciting stuff is. So these are new announcements, or a new product that isn't quite here yet. Um, on our little display here. We have our AC4400s, we have our first from the first collection. We also have an example from the second announcement. Lifesaver uh, P42, the P40s, and the Via Rail P42s are all on the water right now. So you have, so you have uh, some containers on the water, some containers about to leave the factory. So oh. we'll see this stuff hitting stores in 60 days. -ish. So like this one will be probably March. March. Um, it's you know right now we're seeing about 45 days because uh, once it lands and we have to put it on a train and do it to our warehouse. Uh, we're also showing some of the SD78 ACUs. Um, one of my personal pet projects was the concession caboose, which is more of a scenery item. Yep. Uh, so we're offering a lit uh, informational sign. The, the lights for the menus are lit as well. So so what do you do for uh, Athern? I am Athern's product manager, so I do all the new development. And so anything that's new, I've, I've worked on it. And then anything that's older that needs to be modified or improved, I also work on it. So they don't let me out of the office often, which is why you see Jim most of the time. Which is why we see Jim? Yeah. yeah. Jim, I, I've been trying to interview a bunch of famous... Hey, it's Mike Lyman. 
I've been trying to interview a bunch of famous Model Road YouTubers and just find out what they do when they're not doing YouTube. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're actually on live right now. It's 150 people uh, watching us, so we just wanted to check in with you. Sure. Uh, say hello. I won't... Uh, I know Mike well. Mike, uh, Mike's in our area, and I, I know I'm sure Mike's got some great questions for you. I just have but, one question. Okay. Oh, just when will the California cars be ready? Mm -hmm. So we are trying like crazy to get those out before the end of this year. I don't have a firm date for you, unfortunately, because there's a lot of factors that we're looking into, but we are working on getting those out by the end of the year. I, I will tell you that having designed the original ones, it didn't take this long. Yeah, well, physics sometimes is And they work right are... out of the box. Yeah, <laughs> we appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some things that we did that we weren't anticipating with the chip shortage. Yeah. Um, some other things that were there, and there was some also some more refinements that we've done to the cars that we did, originally didn't advertise. So that's what part of the reasons why we have that unexpected uh, wait time. Well, we also did the uh, Caltrain cars, and they had a good excuse. So, Mike Washington here, here uh, who's talking in gym, is a uh, transportation specialist. Started off working on uh, New York Central way back in the day. Good to see you, Mike. Thank you. Good to see you as well. So, Jim, uh, when you're not on uh, YouTube, you uh, your side job is working for Athern, I understand? So, yeah, my full-time job career is working for Athern. I'm the marketing uh, guy for Athern. So, if you see a print ad in a magazine, or if you see uh, some banner artwork somewhere on a website, or social media posts, that's predominantly me. I do that. I also do uh, the shows, so if you see me at a show, um, I set up the booth, I design the booth, all of that kind of stuff. I choose what's going to be in the booth. Um, it's just a little bit of everything, but to sum it all up, it's basically putting Atherin product in front of you and trying to get the information to you. Um, so that's my full-time job. So while, while I got you alone, I got a bone to pick with you. Okay. Starting in 2023, I decided to take my weekly live streams and move them to a different day and time. Uh-huh. So I looked around and I said, oh, nobody is streaming on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock. That's, I'm going to choose to stream Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock. And then Atherin decided to do their shows on Tuesday at 8 o'clock. So this year I switched my times to Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So everybody was joking that I needed to talk to you and make sure that you weren't going to be switching <laughs> your live streams to... Uh, Wednesday at nine o'clock sure. as well, but people appreciate all the information, so oh, good to hear. I do just want to, uh, yeah. I mean, I think YouTube has a way of sharing and communicating with people right. and sharing this hobby uh, that I really enjoy. Yep, and really appreciate that, which is you know why I come here to uh, meet people and whatnot. But uh, yeah, so uh, every Tuesday at eight o'clock. Yeah, yeah, we started. Uh, we actually started that during the pandemic back in 2020. And uh, originally it was 3.30 in the afternoon yes. because, let's admit it, I mean, the world was at a standstill. Nobody was doing anything. So we did that as a way to communicate to our, our customers. Uh, Janet Gringle and uh, Matt Gentry started Train Tuesday back in 2020. And uh, when I came on board, uh, we were starting to slowly get out of the pandemic. And we were getting some folks saying, hey, you know what, 3.30, I'm at work. I can't really watch or participate. So we sent out a survey, and overwhelmingly, they wanted 7 o'clock Central. Um, 8 o'clock for you guys on the East Coast, my home area, and a little bit earlier for the guys out on the West Coast. Yeah, but there's it a reason I switched to that exactly. time on Tuesdays. <laughs> exactly. So now to answer your other question, um, we don't typically do a live stream on Wednesdays. However, we have done some in the past. Now, Atherin Extra is our... Um, usually it's about once a month we do an Atherin Extra. It's a little bit deeper than... Uh, train Tuesday. Typically, we'll do that on a Thursday, but depending on when our guest hosts or our guests are available, we'll do it at another time of the, of the uh, week. And we've seen you on other people's shows as well, other oh, podcasts, yes. other live streams and stuff. Yep. So, Lots of uh, fun. You definitely get around and you, you have your, that's your switching layout behind you that we always see. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. So that's your home That is my, layout. that's my home layout. I also have a layout that nobody's seen before. Um, it's my N-scale layout, which is a, uh, 
it's called the Granite State Industrial, and it's based on the Boston, Maine Northern Industrial uh, Line that was in Manchester, New Hampshire, it, as it appears in 1975. Yeah. So, so uh, you're fighting for us end scalers within Athlon to get us more. Absolutely. Uh, stuff? Yeah, I've said it before. I'm an end scaler. I've been into end scale since 1993, yeah. um, and I've been more of a prototype modeler with N-Scale. I want to prove to everybody that N-Scale can do everything HO does. Um, and so that's what this switching layout I'm building right now is. And um, will we get to see this N-Scale Eventually, yeah. yeah. If, if folks want to, if you don't mind me giving a plug for a forum, yeah, no, um, they can go to trainboard.com. Yep. And I'm a moderator at Trainboard. I've been a moderator since 2004. And I've got a build thread on there. Um, where I'm currently taking microengineering code 55 and code 40 rail and doing a small segment of the Boston Maine Northern Line. That's and, fantastic. Uh, lots of fun. And then I think you were asking what else I do in my off time. Uh, most people know I'm a car guy. So I, I I'm restoring a uh, 1965 Ford Falcon right now and I've got a Mustang for fun. And yeah, I do a lot of car shows on the, on the car show season. And, and do you sleep at all? Um, occasionally, yeah. More so in the wintertime than the summertime, but yeah, if I'm not on the road somewhere going to uh, an event like this or a car show, yeah, I'm usually pretty busy. Uh, so one last time, uh, if people want to know more about Ather and where they can find you, YouTube sure. channel, so where, where, where Absolutely. should they find you? So Train uh, Tuesday is live uh, during the winter months and spring months. It's live on YouTube as well as Facebook, 7 o'clock Central uh, Tuesdays. And uh, it's usually about a 30-minute program. If I have time, I take questions from you, the audience. I love interacting with you guys, so don't be afraid to ask a question or leave a comment. Fantastic. Thank you for your time. That's me, if you're curious. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice talking with you. I'm going to keep talking about KCS, right? That's some good stuff right there. We've been streaming for about two hours. I need to take a little bit of a rest, so I am going to wrap it up here and say goodbye for a little bit and maybe actually go do a little bit of walking around and maybe maybe see something that might interest me that I can bring home with myself. So while I'm not in New York City, we'll still close out with my usual tagline. From the city that never sleeps, farewell model citizens.